All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is John John the Wise, and I'm here with my wise guys. This is part two of Cyberpunk Red, the complete rules beta, or whatever you want to call it. It's completely complete, in my opinion. And we are here to continue our adventure in Austin, Texas. If you haven't seen part one, it is up on YouTube, ready to go. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, make sure you guys are following me on social media. Make sure you guys are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch. I'm on all of those, okay? And on top of that, make sure you join our Discord so you could be part of a really cool cyberpunk community. The link will be in the description below. I need to delete that RKO Gaming Con. It is over. Yas. Okay. Now, before we get started and start introducing our characters so we can get on with the story, I do want to cover one thing that I think is very important. Some people have said that, hey, you're not playing rules as written. You can't really say you're playing the complete rules if you're not, if you're not doing that. And uh, I think that's the minority. Most people are not saying anything like that. Most people are like really cool about it. They're like, yeah, whatever, homebrew if you have to. But I do think that a lot of people are tuning into our game because they want a little bit of insight on the rules and they want things to go, you know, uh, kind of rules as, as, as much rules as written as it can be just so they can get a taste of the game, right? I think that's fair that people are tuning in for that. And for those people that are tuning in, I went over some of the stuff that we homebrewed in last session. We... Remember, we're new to this game as well. This is a new system, so we're trying to figure out things. We have a show, we need to entertain, and we need to keep things moving. So, in the essence of all that, we just did whatever we could to move things along. Since then, I have gotten some rules down, and anytime we are going to do a homebrew in our game from now on, it's because either A, it's missing from the rulebook, there's nothing in the rulebook about it. Or B, we're just doing it because we don't want to spend too much time looking up the rule. And I'll make sure to say, hey, this is a homebrew, we're not sure, and we're moving on. Other than that, we're pretty much trying to stick to the rules. We've decided that we're going to try to stick to the rules as much as we can. Alright? Armor ablation, all that stuff. We did it wrong last session on purpose. We're going back to the rules as written, okay? All right, so we got that out of the way. Thank you guys for being a part of our awesome journey. Let's start with introductions, top left. Barry Ruth, my boy. Introduce your hey. character. <clears throat> What's up? Uh, you got Barry Ruth here. He's a bit of an oddball in the cyberpunk uh, world. Uh, he can't shoot. Asshole is shit with a gun. So he goes around punching people in the face, hitting them with bats and throwing knives and axes and shit at people because he's he's pretty good aim at throwing stuff but you hand him a gun he just isn't his thing he's a solo who works exclusively with melee weapon um he's he's a bit uh insane because of that because he's constantly while everyone else is ducking behind buildings and stuff like that when the gunfire starts he starts charging at the people with the gun throwing axes exactly <laughs> all right <laughs> thank you very much barry ruth we'll move on to my boy hub man sango oh wait wait i did it. i have it incorrectly up here right let's let's set the record straight here guys please type in chat how you say your name hub masango what do i have up there oh man sango <laughs> <laughs> Mandingo. Get rid of that Mandingo, all right? Listen, your name is Man Sango, and that's it, okay? <laughs> You're <laughs> muted, by the way, Joe. Yeah, sorry. Okay, was... there you go. <laughs> all right. Hub Masango. The N is silent. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's uh, a nomad, and he's uh, mostly a, a smuggler. Like, his car is very. Uh, looks normal, doesn't stand out a whole lot he's got hidden compartments in it and a few other surprises but uh mostly you wouldn't be able to tell by by looking at him that he's smuggling people and or things to uh places as it should be um he uh doesn't like to 
get into direct confrontations a lot, but he's got an SMG and a pistol if he needs to use it. Okay. Very nice. Sounds good. Let's move on to my boy Sam Ectoplasm. What can we really say about Sam Ectoplasm? Except he's the greatest visionary since Johnny Silverhand. Right? Mm. And his sole purpose is to burn all of the corporations to the ground in a giant fiery hellstorm explosion while playing sick heavy metal riffs in the background. I mean, in the foreground. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> the foreground. <laughs> the foreground. And, and people think that people think that Barry Ruth is insane? Come on. Sam Ectoplasm's the one that's insane. Easily. And next up is our resident netrunner, ladies and gentlemen, Black Adder. Greetings and salutations. I am your local friendly neighborhood netrunner, Black Adder. Freelance mostly until now, currently. Run and gun. Arrogant and proud. I love my synth coke. I do plenty of it, but I can't handle it. So that's just uh, kind of the way it is. Uh, work for a lot of corporate execs back in the day. I steal programs. I make programs. A lot of other net runners don't like me because I'm just that goddamn good. Period. All right. Thank you for the introductions, ladies and gentlemen. Now I will take your attention to Austin, Texas, where our boys are outside of the Storm Nightclub. And adjacent to the Storm Nightclub is a biotechnical laboratory. Now, what are they doing here? Huh? That's the question, right? The reason they are in Austin, Texas in the first place is because they wanted to lay low. And Hub Ma Mas Masango... Sorry, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Just say Hub, it's okay. Hub. Hub, Hub, Hub. Hub got a call from Dr. Creel, part of the Central Texas Preservation Society, a nomad group that takes care of the artifacts and, uh, and archaeological finds in Central Texas. And he told him, hey, Hub, I need some help over here. We need your expertise, and uh, please bring some guys with guns. And that's exactly what he did. He brought his crew with him that coincidentally needed to get out of Night City and lay low. And when they got to Austin, Dr. Creel was kidnapped by some corporate goons who we are speculating is probably part of Biotechnica. Now, why is Dr. Creel in trouble with Biotechnica? The reason he's in trouble with Biotechnica is because he has taken charge of an archaeological dig site 40 miles north of Austin called the Galt site and there's something there that biotechnica wants they got all the permits they got everything they needed to do and they even sent a letter to dr creel after the failed kidnapping thanks to the players saying hey by the way we're coming tomorrow with force so you guys better get the hell out of there 24 hours is what the letter said and the players wanted to help dr creel out of course, that's what they're tasked with doing for their own reasons. And so the players have headed to the Storm nightclub where they know next to it is a biotechnical lab. And their research has shown that there's been activity in that lab and stuff like that. So after uh, selling a guy his motorcycle back to him, they are now standing outside of the nightclub, the Storm. And while they were standing outside, they saw somebody get taken out of the club, pulled out into the alley, and disappeared somewhere over here, as you can see on my screen. And take it away, boys. All right, well, now we don't have to get fucked up and taken away by these guys. Maybe we can just follow. <laughs> now we no longer have to get... Poor uh, Sam Echo completely <laughs> wasted and then push him out the door as so. All right, so we want to we wanna sneak behind him? You see that like Sam Ectoplasm wouldn't just do it. Well, yeah, so, that's so, why we were going to do it. So, <laughs> settle, settle down now, gentlemen. Let's get a scan of the area. We got any nodes present? Why don't you give me a uh, Pathfinder? 
is this a bouncer standing out in front of the club? Yeah, exactly. Back inside? That's exactly okay. what he is. Okay, your Pathfinder is an 8. You're looking with your cyber deck and looking for a node nearby, but you're not getting any signals or any sign of a signal, uh, whether you're looking to, at the storm or the biotechnical lab. Roger that. And as you guys are just hanging out outside, you know, you're hearing uh, uh, stuff, the kind of sounds you would hear in a bar, people drinking, dancing, boom, 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 boom of the bass. And uh, pretty much all business as usual going on. Hey, Hub. Yeah. You good at not being seen? I am okay at it. Alright, I'm gonna go talk to the uh, bouncer then, and you try and get a look around that corner while uh, Sam watches over at her back there. Sounds good. So, uh, I'm gonna have my guy walk up to the bouncer. Okay. And start talking to him, mostly to distract him from Sam slipping past to go look where the guy got shoved off to. Well, you let's. Hub? Well, let's see what our buddy will do. So, you are pretty much just chatting up with this guy, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna ask him. You know, uh, you know what? What's the basically? Uh, is the club looking for any new muscle? You know, do do they need another bounce? Or you know, what's the pay like in the area? I just got here. I'm looking for some work. Things like that. Yeah, you go and you start having a chat with this guy, and he's kind of telling you to wait in the back of the line. There's a giant line in front of this club, and people are trying to get in. They're trying to pay this guy to get in. And you're just like walking up to him, have, trying to have a conversation with him. And it's clear that, let's see here. Ooh, he is multitasking really well. He is able to have this conversation with you and he's chatting it up with you. And then he notices Joe walking up. Wouldn't that be a um, perception check though? Oh, you're right. Not a dex check. You're right. It would be a perception, which is intelligence, right? Um, yeah, that's an intel check. Oof. And um, oh, let's you meet. Let's roll. Well, off. hold up. I hold up. Hold up. I am talking to him and trying to distract him. So wouldn't I get to roll a persuasion check to help with his stealth? Let's do it. I'm actively. Let's do it. Let's see your persuasion. So. Okay, that is an empathy, right? No, persuasion is uh, intel. I believe it's an empathy check. Oh, no, persuasion is a cool check. Persuasion is a cool so, check. Okay. Sorry. I was looking at uh, perception above it when so I said that. So he's going to roll a conversation against your persuasion. All right. And you guys are having this conversation with each other, and he, he's definitely overwhelmed. People are trying to pay him and bribe him to get in. And it looks like, Joe, when you're about to walk in, somebody else has the same idea as you, and they're, like, walking in. And the bouncer can't see at this moment. It's a split-second action. You can either go in with them, or you'd have to stay outside and try to find another time to go in. Well, we're not trying to go into the bar. We're okay. trying to sneak past him to the alleyway that uh, that they took that guy in. To okay. And look Right. Either way, then you would have to wait a second. He notices those people went in. He turns around. He ignores Barry and Hub, tells everybody in line to wait, and he r runs in looking like he's going to go try to get those people and stop them from coming, going into the nightclub. It's kind of closed off. There's some bouncers right there, but both of you can get past easily. All right. Yeah, I'll... Uh... If I look in real quick, do I see that guy that they uh, that they dragged back there? Yeah. So looking back there, you see these uh, three cybered out guys holding that guy up against the wall, chatting with him. But they're kind of like they're deep in his personal bubble. The guy's clearly drunk out of his mind. They're talking to him. It looks like one of them's looking at his wallet. The other one's looking at his agent. Uh, I guess I'll. Uh... 
I'll signal to uh, to Barry that uh, there's some shit going down over there, and that I see him. I guess we're gonna slip on over there. Do you, do we need to go ahead and roll some stealth checks as well for that? If you don't want them to see you. All right. Yeah, and as as they're doing that, I'm gonna motion to Sam that I'm gonna move around the lower building, the laboratory down here, to try and scan for another node somewhere. Oh, and before I move over there, I'm gonna look at the guys who are waiting in line and go. Looks like the door's open to me. <laughs> yeah. Like as chaos. you're saying that, there's definitely chaos going on. There, people are trying to get in. This looks like a, the type of nightclub that uh that is big in the austin nightlife 21 20 19 versus your 21 and 19 okay yeah and perception is confirmed intelligence okay and uh what what did you say black adder was doing over there looking for a note? I'm so, I'm, yeah i'm coming down here to search for another note see if i can get a hit on a signal down here okay why don't you roll me a stealth check oh shit old stuff because old still there is a camera directly on top above you Ooh, so smooth. Smooth, smooth. You're able to get into the the blind spot of the camera. You see it shifting and moving, but there is a blind spot. It's like behind this uh, little thing that's over here. So you're kind of like behind it. And you're on your cyber deck, and you definitely find a node inside. There's a node directly right here. It's, uh, it's, it's actually Inside, right though, right? Yeah, inside. So you're... Yeah, you're you're close enough that you can access that node. And I do want to access that node. Okay, so we'll come back to you. Yep. Barry and uh, Hub, you guys review. You guys go back there, try to hide, and they hear you, Hub, as you walk in. They hear a noise back there. Are you got? Show me where you guys would hide. Let's say there's like trash cans and stuff over there. I was trying to move up uh, this way. Okay. So you are, you're like behind uh, a trash can over there. You're behind some debris over here. And um, one of them hears a commotion in that direction. And they start walking in that direction. And they get to about right here. And we're going to pause while that's going on. Black Adder, why don't you get into this system? Roll me a, uh, roll me, you did your scan. Roll me a Pathfinder. Okay. Fuck. Jesus you Christ, you man. find a net architecture and it has two floors from what you can tell. That's just two floors, no details, right? Yeah, that's it. You just know that there's two floors. The first floor is the password. The second one, you're unsure what's in there. Okay, roger that. And when you do that, your cyber deck, a special button on your cyber deck lights up. And that button is labeled Demon. And your cyber deck is telling you that you're in an architecture where a demon is present. And a demon is pretty much an AI that can it can act as a net runner. It's like a dummy net runner in this architecture. And it knows that you're in the system immediately. Fuck. No matter who you are. It knows immediately you're in its system. And it doesn't have to evade and you can't get away from it. It will always follow you because it knows this system. The good news is it can be de-rest and it can be overcome. But you don't know anything about this demon. You don't know how powerful it is or anything. So you have a chance to jack out. Yeah, I'm jacking out. Okay, you jack out safely. All right, and this guy gets to this close, Barry. He's act he's going to round the corner and uh, get into contact, eye contact with you. Is there anything so, you want to do? Yeah, there, there will be something I want to do. Uh, one, can I tell if the other guys are paying us any attention yet or if they're just... Yeah, still looking out? through the slits of your cover, you can see these guys are not really paying it that much attention. They kind of told this guy, like, hey, go check it out while they're, like, still messing with this drunk guy, checking his agent, you know, looking through his stuff. As he goes to come around the corner, I'm going to snatch him. Do a grab, you know, cover his mouth and just yank him in. Okay, roll me a, uh, roll me a, a grab. Athletic. Yeah, roll me an athletics, and I'm gonna roll his athletics. Yoke that fool up. And I'm gonna give him a minus three. Okay, versus your athletics. 
Oh, barely. Just barely, dude. I'm going to give you the win on that because it's just barely on that minus three. Okay. You grab him and you take him down behind that cover and you hold on to him. I'm assuming you cover his mouth. Yeah, covering his mouth and kind of just starting to like choke his ass out. <laughs> okay, he's he's like moving around. He's he's about he kicks some of the trash, makes a little bit of noise. And one of the other guys looks in that direction. I'm going to put him right here. Looks in that direction, sees the guy's flailing feet and turns around and pulls out a firearm. And so does oh. this guy. They both pull out pistols and they go, "Who's back there?" All right, don't. Can we hear that commotion? Sam and I. Sam's all the way out on the corner, and I'm here in this nook of the building. Can we hear what's going on back there? Or you something? could definitely hear the the volume <laughs> that he screamed. Who's back there? You heard Blackadder heard it for sure. <laughs> all right, after I jack out, I want to motion over to Sam. Yo, we got to move. So I want to make our way over around the south side of the lab to this other gate, this other wooden gate down here. Uh, uh, I, I'm gonna try and keep the attention on me and. And kind of uh, slurring out my words. You don't kick my damn uh, whiskey or whatever. <laughs> okay. As I'm just still behind this cover, choking this dude out. <laughs> All right, the guy that you're choking out, he's like, "Oh, you fucking get off me! Get ah, you fucking smell like shit." <laughs> and then these guys they, they they start laughing and they're like oh did you get snatched by a bum there Charlie and he goes shut up shut the fuck up and uh, he tries to do you let him go or you're still holding on to him tightly yeah I, I'm going to let him go but as I do I'm just going to jack him as hard in the jaw as I can okay so you punch him in the face so let's get a attack from you. Okay. And we'll give you a plus three. Oh, <laughs> nice. That's a critical. Dude. That's a critical. All right. It doesn't matter what he rolled. I don't. It, it was a twenty-one. You turn this guy around and whack him. He doesn't even see this punch coming. So yeah, give my me, body's pretty pretty swollen up too. Give, we're gonna roll a. Uh, a critical Pretty injury sick. and roll me your damage too what cracked skull yes <laughs> nice oof you gave him a cracked skull <laughs> aim uh, shots to your head multiply the damage that gets through your sp by three times instead of two times so this guy's head is no good and you did <laughs> you did 28 damage do you, do you have a cyber arm by the way uh, nobody wears brass knucks if that counts. <laughs> okay, so yeah, he does have. So wait, you said it was three times damage? Uh, from now on, now that his skull uh, is cracked, yeah. Okay, so twenty-eight minus ignoring uh, half armor. Oh yeah, and ignoring half armor, you're right. So uh, you do twenty-five damage to this guy's head. Ooh. It's like mashed potatoes. And then he gets five damage for uh, directly from a critical injury. So this guy falls to the ground and he just bleeds. He's bleeding out of his mouth, and uh, he's unconscious. His head is cracked. <laughs> you punched him so hard in the jaw, it 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 somehow pushed his jawbone into his head and cracked his skull. Oh, <laughs> nice! And this guy falls oh, to the ground. And then these guys begin to pull up their firearms to t take aim at you. And Hub, you've been watching this go down this whole time. So if you want to ambush with a shot or something, now's your chance. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll shoot. Am I, am I within where I need a, a 15 to get him, I think? So let's look at my cheat sheet real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six squares. With an SMG. Yeah. Yeah, you need a thirteen. 13. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Then I'll. Um, what was it? Was it a negative eight to? Called shot. To, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. You said these guys are pretty cybered out. Uh. 
<laughs> yeah, you would what need a twenty. You would need a that? twenty-one to get an aimed shot to the head. Yeah. Um, fuck it. I'll, I'll go for an aimed shot to the head. All right. Sounds good. You get two shots, so the first one can be aimed. Oh, Hell you got yeah. it. You got it, dude. Nice. Nice. Roll your damage. Nice dice. Well played. Alright, 26 damage to the dome is not good. This guy's gonna take 20 damage to the head. And he is in Negativeville right now. He's not doing uh, good. So is he unconscious too? Or? No, he's dazed. And you can see that uh, he's not all there. You shot him in the head and the bullet kind of penetrated through the side of his skull. And you see a bunch of servos and cyberware that is just destroyed. His eyes probably are not working anymore, or one of his cyber eyes. And you see blood pouring out from that wound too. So this guy's not in a good position right now. You do have another shot though. Yeah, I'll take one more shot, and this one I'll just do a regular shot. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> critical, dude. Damn. Damn. All right. <laughs> You shot him Jesus. in the leg, and his leg came went clean off, dude. Oh my god, this is a nice ass pistol I got here. <laughs> Five damage off the bat, just from his leg being dis utterly destroyed, and you did twelve damage to his body, which leaves him barely alive. Uh, uh, I'm gonna roll his will to see if this guy is even gonna be able to fight. No, it's not enough. <laughs> this guy is on the ground. His leg is completely dismembered from your shot. You shot him once in the head, once in the leg, and his leg came clean off. This guy's on the ground bleeding, and uh, his buddy is going to try to take hey, a shot. John? Yeah. Or sorry, let's quick do question. initiative. Well, quick question. Yeah. In Cyberpunk, you can technically move between shots, right? Yeah, you can shoot, move, shoot. You can move, so shoot, shoot. Melee attacks have a two rate of fire, so if I had wanted to, I could just have ran up here and baseballed this guy with my other rate of fire. Right? Exactly, yeah. During that whole uh, altercation. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to. I'm just like for people watching and stuff like that. If I'd have thought about it at that moment, that's something that could have been done. Yeah, Good definitely, call. definitely. Okay. So these two guys are out of commission expertly out of commission they're still alive but barely they're right, on the I'm ground i'm just going to go ahead and i'm gonna put uh all my points this round uh this combat into my initiative so my initiative is going to be at a plus four uh so for jimmy and uh or sam and black adder you guys aren't done are, aren't there yet but you will be in the next round there's only yes. one guy left anyway Hub was at a 12, and Black Adder was at a 13. So we're going to go Barry, you're first. Oh, Barry's going to come out from behind cover because this dude has pistols drawn. Yep, you, he's as he's pulling out his uh, gun, his buddy gets shot, his other buddy gets punched in the face, and he's about to take aim, and when he does, Barry Ruth has closed the distance with this with guy. It. With his favorite of weapons. All right, you take a swing at this guy with your baseball bat, and he instinctively tries to dodge, and he successfully dodges your first attack. Barely. Okay. And you go Are for a backswing. And he successfully yeah. dodges your second attack as well, as he ducks Damn. under your swing. And that will be Hub's turn. All right. Um, take another uh, another shot. I'll do uh, call a shot to the head for this guy. I'm okay. That is, I believe it's the same distance, right? Oh, 14 squares is. I think it's the next one up. You would pro probably want to move yeah. a space. Yeah. Up. You would, a you would need a 28, so you want to get closer. You want to get within six squares. Uh, okay. Sweet. All right. Take a shot. Do it, baby. We need a 21. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> called shot to the head is a success. Roll your I damage. 24 nice. damage to the dome of this guy. 
And we're gonna do a little bit of quick math. And he takes 18 damage to the head. And Ooh. he is not having a good day right now. Okay, I'll take my second <laughs> shot. I'll, I'll do another shot to the head. Yeah, the bullet just put just goes straight into his brain. Comes oh, out the back. Second. The second one goes a little bit wide. He moved his head at the last second. And you were not able to get the second shot off, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, this guy is going to point his gun straight at Barry Ruth. And he's going to go for a called shot to the head. Motherfuck. Yeah, he's he's crazy. Which is uh, 13 plus 8. He needs a 21 as well. Misses. Yep. He's he's moving he's moving the pistol around. He's gonna try to take another shot. Misses again. Barry is expertly dodging out of the way of this guy's <laughs> shots. Bob like and a Matrix me. style. Matrix style. <laughs> And then next thing you know, Sam Ectoplasm, you are there exactly when you need to be. You heard the oh, gunshots. Shit. It is your turn. I'm going to go right. Is there a fence here? Yeah, that's a fence right here. But you would be able to get over there and then maybe do an athletics to get over it. Wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you going to go for range or are you going to go for melee? Oh, no. I can shoot through the fence, right? Uh... Well, it's kind of the your your vision is is obscured, but let's see. I'll roll a d10 for it. Get get on the shoulders. Get on the shoulders. <laughs> All right, yeah, you like can shoot through the fence. It's a <laughs> it's a chain link fence. You can see through it. All okay. right, sweet. Okay. I'm gonna take a shot at this dude. All right. I wish it hadn't been because I would love the image of Sam sitting on Blackadder's shoulder shooting. At as he as I rise up with him on my shoulders, he pulls back the hood and the fucking mohawk just bing. <laughs> and he's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> such a good visual. <laughs> All right, that is a hit. I believe four squares. It should be a hit with yeah. a handgun, right? Uh, yeah, handgun, four squares. Yeah, yeah right on it. Fifteen is right on it. Roll your damage. Ooh, Thirteen damage. Deserve. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, you hit this guy in the back, and he feels it, dude. You get one more shot. Ooh, second shot misses, unfortunately. And this guy's not having a good day. He's getting shot from both sides. As Blackadder, you are next. Yep, just going to move over to the west of Sam. I'm going to take aim and fire at this last standing fool right here. All right. Nope. First one's a miss. You crack a shot. It misses. It goes wide. <laughs> Second <laughs> shot also goes wide, unfortunately. Nope. Pa, pa, you're just there for uh, emotional support. <laughs> and Barry, it is your turn. Well, we know what I'm doing. Exactly. Is he at half-life? If so, he would be at a negative two, right? Exactly, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Always remind me, if you guys can, because I always forget. Okay. Oh! Not a good day for this guy. I'm going to say that's a critical injury on his part. <laughs> you tried to dodge. Right. <laughs> yes. Because I just love rolling on that chart anyway. <laughs> you just... That is pretty sweet, by the way. <laughs> That My is, spike bat takes his arm off. That is a homebrew. Nice. People that are listening, that is not in the book. I have just <laughs> decided on the spot that if he fumbled on his dodge, that it is a critical injury. And you, you dismember this guy's arm. Okay. You, well, think about it. Do you know how fast and with how much force he has to swing this blunt object to, to sever... He's not, well, has, sever has nails he's, not, he's not severing this guy's arm. It's got nails in the bat. The <laughs> nails are hitting this dude in the arm and literally ripping this dude's arm out of the socket. It ripped the chunk out. It, dis it dismembered his arm. His arm came off of his body. And That's let's great. see, is that his shooting arm? Uh, evens, yes. Odds, no. No, it was not mm. his shooting arm. But it makes no difference because this guy's literally on one HP. Nice. <laughs> and last time I checked, one HP is not enough to want to fight four on one. Wait a second. Where's he gonna run? Time. He's got nowhere to run. Just a flesh wound, okay? 
<laughs> I have another attack. Oh yeah, you have another attack. Hit him. Gary is going to reach down, grab the severed arm, and hit the guy as hard as he can with it. Oh. Yes. You you beat Beam the poor guy with arm. his own arm. And with heavy Beautiful. negatives, as I rolled, heavy Beautiful. negatives, he is not able to dodge your attack, and you literally beat him up to death with his own dismembered arm. <laughs> Fucking Every amazing. Every single combat results in Hub really thinking about who he is currently adventuring with. <laughs> like, oh. mm. At this point, the other two thugs... Uh, security guys that are back here they've already bled out and died without medical attention they just bled out and there's kind of a commotion outside of the alley as people heard gunshots screaming and heard the sound of flesh falling to the ground and stuff like that but um, as far as you guys know Nobody has come back to the alley. You have no vision of the outside area over here or the club or anything like that. Oh, and, oh yeah, and there's also that drunk guy. He's just sitting there like dumbfounded. Looks like you guys kind of sobered him up with your actions. Are we still moving <laughs> in combat or are we free moving uh, now? No, now you're free moving. I'm going right. to reach down, grab up the drunk guy, look at him. You know we just saved your life, right? Just don't kill me, man. I'll look here. Take whatever I have. What you're going to go do is run back by the club, looking back at there, laughing, going, "You'll never take me, Lucky Charm," and I'm going to shove him towards the house. <laughs> he drops you thirty bucks on credit stick on disposable credit sticks, and yeah. and as you throw him, he just runs out of this alley. And runs out into this area and disappears. Does he? Does he scream like he's supposed to? Yeah, yeah, he's screaming. He's like, "Lucky charms!" I don't know, man. He told me to say it. "lucky charms." <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm right here at the end of the alley again. Well, okay. I'd be right here, so technically, I'd be walking back. Right, so yeah, and I moved over towards that corner again because if we're not going inside right yet, I may want to dance with the demon a little bit here. Yeah, so. so he he left his uh, his wallet and his agent that they were going through out here, right? Yeah, he left everything behind. All right, let's let's check that out and see what they were maybe looking for. Okay. Yeah, you guys as can he's look checking that out, I'm going to be searching the guys we just killed for IDs, uh, key cards, things like that, their agents, their orders. Yeah. So as you guys are looking through these bodies, uh, let's and see. And also, any special ammo they might. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> let's see how much money these guys have on on them. So between all of them, they have about sixty bucks. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and they do have their agents, and they don't have any special ammunition on them, save for one guy. He has one armor-piercing round. This guy, right next to Hub. Uh, cool, it's, cool. You know it's armor-piercing from the green tip. On the bullet, Sweet. take that. Yeah, and it just so happens to fit your your the caliber of your weapon. And on top of that, yeah, it looks like each one of these guys have a key card, and the address on the key card matches the same address as this biotechnical lab you guys are right next to. So you'd find all that stuff on him. And uh, if you guys want to go through the agent of the guy that you're with, or any of the agents you're with. You would have to roll an electronic security with a tech tool. Do any of you guys have a tech tool? Uh, actually, yeah. to me that feels like a very black adder situation. But or I'm I was gonna say, or black adder can connect to it with the cyber deck and try to hack it. I'm kind of grabbing a tech tool, mostly for uh, for like maintenance on stuff, but I do have one. So that's oh, the two routes you guys can take. You can either try to w you technically turn it on and bypass the password like that, or Blackadder can actually go through the phone, go through its database, and any other things that it has, any kind of information. Well, my only skill with uh, tech is uh, is with uh, land vehicles, so I think we go with uh, Adder. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to quickly just 
dump these dudes into the nearest by garbage can. Like yep. dumpsters, because I see there's dumpsters in yeah, here, so they're right there. They're going into dumpsters, and I'm like, uh, we need to get the fuck out. And I start going to go around the backside of uh, the club to loop around. Okay, yeah, you can easily do that going around the backside of the club. And actually, as you're doing that, you're hearing kind of a commotion behind this wooden fence here. It looks like uh, some people are lining up behind it. And they're trying to look through the gate, the the holes in the gate to see if they can see anything, but their vision's very obscured. Is it the same type of fence? Is it a chain link fence as the one down on the south side? It's a different no, fence. No. Okay. Yeah. So they can't see through it. And uh, Blackadder, you exited from the south. Sam, you exited from the south. And you guys are good to go. Hub and Barry, you guys can exit from the north and go out from the other perimeter of the building and end up over here by Hub's car and um, and this entrance where uh, Sam was hanging out, right? That's no, I'm, Sam's right here. I'm still keeping an eye on uh, Black Adder over here. But like Sam is, he's got it. What he's doing is he's got his his light tattoos and his outfit and his tech hair and stuff, and he's kind of like. He's got it synced to pulse with the music from the club, and he's kind of like leaning up against. He's just kind of like leaning up against the corner of the of the building, just like generally just vibing with the music from the club. Yeah, you do that, Sam, and you see a bunch of party goers that look like they were coming out of this club. They all just start shuffling out from that little area, like right here where I'm pointing. Just crowds of them are coming out. It seems like the club is prematurely closed or kicked people out or something of that nature because they're now like taking over the streets. Some of them are leaning on this car and a uh, few of them look in your direction. And why don't I get the, your rocker boy special ability? Okay. Just a 1d10 plus charismatic impact plus anything else. Yeah, so but it's for the group of people. So let me go to your, let me go, I have the thing right here, Charismatic Impact. So this is a huge group, and you're at a DV, you're at a 4, right? On your rank? Yeah, my characters, characteristic impact is 4. Okay, so I'm you need to... If anything else gets, I'm just wondering if anything else gets added into it. Yeah, so it's going to be D10 plus Charismatic Impact, that's it. Okay. And you want to beat a 12? Nope. Okay, no... Uh, the people in this crowd do not recognize you and uh, don't know who you are, so they're just kind of vibing on their own and just chilling, listening to music, leaning on this person's vehicle. That person is coming out, telling them to get off the car. They're talking to them, kind of having an argument, but like jovial argument. I'm going to kind of like lean over and look over at her and be like, hey man, you good? That's you, DG. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look over at him real quick, kind of tap up on my VR goggles a little bit and look, call out to the boys. Yo, Hub, Barry, where you at? You disappeared. Location, please. I love it. That's pretty good. I like that. Of course. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. we can't see. We're on the south side of that lab now, so we can't see them. They just booked up the alleyway to the north. If, no? Yeah, because exactly. if Black, if Black Adder's good, Sam's gonna go over here. And be like, God, yo, what happened? Everybody get kicked out of the club? I was just coming to party, man. Yeah, so we'll just uh, respond to Adder and say that we uh, we got some stuff for him to look at. They were shaking down some guy uh, they uh, they pulled out of the club. Got his right, agent cool. wallet. Might have something for uh, some information in there. We got All a right, lot cool. of stuff. So that so that response from the comms, I'm immediately like, oh, you got something for me to look at? I'm going to disengage. I was going to jack back in, but I'm like, ooh, shiny. And I'm going to come over here off to the corner and get ready to rally back up at the vehicle to the north. And uh, right. from Sam, let me get a conversation roll, plus four. As you're talking to these party goers. All right, you're chopping it up with these people. They're laughing. They like the way you're dressed. They, they, they start talking about your light tattoos. And uh, you see a group of uh, young girls with uh, two, it's like five girls and two guys. They're all hanging out and uh, they're hanging out by this vehicle. What do you say as you approach them? It was just going to be like, hey, so I was, you know, 
I just came from Night City. You know, I heard this club. It was like the club to be, but why is everybody leaving, man? I just came to party. I one came of to the, party, maybe, maybe even put on a show if they had the stuff I needed for it. One of the... Th- t- two of them just kind of look at you and, like, laugh. Uh, but then one of them looks and says, Hey, man, did you say Night City? Yeah. Holy shit, you're from Night City, man? Oh, yeah. What's it like over there? I heard it's all just stuck-up people. Ah, uh, nah, gonna... man. It's pretty wild, but, you know, someone's got to... Someone's got to follow in. Uh, this is after, like, John, just to ask, this is after, like, directly after, sometime after the fourth corporate war and stuff like that, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, the lore that, you know, Johnny used his entire impromptu guerrilla concert to storm Arasaka Tech has already happened, right? Exactly. Hey, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, living my life out in, living my life out in uh, the city, trying to continue the craft handed down by, you know, the greatest visionary johnny silverhand you know where's johnny and these Taking people are like oh i course. love johnny man never fade away never as fade they're away. as they're Chipping geeking out every day boys as they're as they're geeking out on him i'm just gonna nuzzle up real close and bump him in the shoulder and be like yo give me a hit man give me a hit <laughs> we gotta talk to you about your uh-oh Adder, hold on, man. I'll be with you in a sec. I'm trying to talk to some people. The, these guys might be new fans, man, okay? They're looking at you, Sam, and they're, like, in awe of you, but then this weird nerdy dude, like, walks up to you asking about a hit, taking a hit. He's got this weird device in his hands, and they're like, uh, is this guy in your band? Nah, man, this is my... This is my... And I just reach... I just put my arm around Adder and kind of pull him in. Is like... This is my dude, man. He's my tech guy. He's everybody I come to. He handles all of the publicity for what I do day in and day out. And as you guys are having this conversation, uh, Adder and Sam, you guys can see in this alleyway, it looks like more of those goons are just kind of lined up over here. There's a few of them. There's like five of them right there. They're like looking over the fence. They have their weapons out. And then there's like one guy over here telling, shooing people away, telling them leave, leave. The club is closed, and that's why there's kind of like a crowd out here. So we we took the agents uh, from the uh, those other like the goons too, right? Yeah, and their ID cards. And yeah. we all buried them accordingly in the trash cans, right? Exactly. <laughs> they got a nice uh, uh, street scum burial. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we'll uh, we'll pile back into our car and maybe uh, maybe drive away, try and blend in with the other people leaving the club. <laughs> sure. We'll uh, hand over the uh, the different agents and ID cards and all of that over to Blackadder. So as you guys uh, are about to go and meet, you make it to the car, no problem. I'm just gonna move you over here. So you make it to the car, no problem. And as you're having that journey. Sam, one of the guys that is a part of this group is like, man, we're probably better off getting kicked out anyway with the rumors going on with that club. Wait, what What kind of rumors? What are you talking about? You know, I mean, people get drunk there and the next thing you know, they go missing. Oh, yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah, supposedly this lab over here, they, they take them in there and they do like experiments or something. I don't know. Sounds like some sci-fi bullshit to me. <laughs> I look at it, sci-fi bullshit, and I look around. And I was like, "Does it, did any of them have like light tattoos?" Or oh cyber yeah, they got like cyberware, that? light tattoos. One of the girls like, is completely chromed out from the head to like toe. The, the guy that Sick. specifically says this is some like crazy sci-fi stuff. What does he? What? Who? What does he look like? Oh, he's like, like a is- preppy kid with uh, completely cyber-eyed blonde hair, uh, pull a uh, a long sleeve dress shirt tucked in to slacks and so he's uh, got he's got tech hair basically yeah yeah he's got tech hair he's, beautiful he's tech like hair. It's some crazy sci-fi bullshit I'm like what are you talking about and i like i touch my mohawk and i tussle his hair it's like you're living sci-fi bullshit man what's wrong with you and well, uh, I mean, this wouldn't be sci-fi bullshit that'd be like if if we were talking about sci-fi bullshit and we had a like, look at your cell phone <laughs> yeah. like to them, this is just normal shit, and then, like, alien abductions and stuff is sci-fi bullshit. Exactly. So that's where he's coming from. He's like, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm not into, like, nerdy shit like that. <laughs> you know, as, as he says that, I'm going to take a bump from Sam 
<laughs> and if he would just give it him. to you, dude. You want to see some sci-fi shit, man? Sam, you would need to hand over the synth coke to Black Adder so he can continue his role play. Hell yeah, I'm just going to go, oh man, this is about to be a party party. All right, you have acquired plus one synth coke, Black Adder. Do you ingest it? Yes. Uh, All right, roll me a resist torture me? drugs, please. Yes, sir. All right, oh. you critically pass. You earn the positive effect of synth coke, which I will have to look up over here. Take That's take your time. It's okay. Take uh, take your time. Street it's drugs. Okay. I found it so fast, dude. Nice. Uh, the primary effect the user's reflex is increased by one point. In addition, they are prone to paranoid ideation. All right, that'll be fun. So you're, <laughs> you have plus one to your reflex. Seems for, legit. For pre pretty much the entire session, the end of this session. Yeah, so you take a bump of this synth coke. The, the party goers start asking for it. That's pretty much it. I mean, you guys can hear that the club, the music is turned off. And these goons are starting to walk out in this direction where you guys were. And not not in a threatening manner or anything. They're, tr they're kind of shooing people away. They're telling them to leave. While these guys stay back here. And they kind of get... Kinda, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just kind of go, hey man, we get it. We're not in the club. You got your club locked down. You guys want to party? And I'll be, you know, I'll go, and then I'll... They just look at you and say nothing. The guy that you offered it to, he just stares at you like dogging you. I'll just do the same thing right back at him. I'll just kind of like lean forward and look at him. The guys, the guy that you're with, the one that you kind of gave a noogie to, he gets up in this guy's face, the same one that you offered co synth coke to, and he goes like, hey man, what's your problem, huh? You think you're some kind of fucking tough guy? And he looks like a way tougher guy than this guy that's talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> when, he, when the other guy starts talking shit, Sam just kind of... Kind of leans back and watches like... Oh. And then uh, and then one of the girls she's with is like, Devin, stop. Devin, stop. Of course it's a Devin. Stop! Yeah. Oh my <laughs> stop. Oh my god, Chad, stop it! The one of the other security guys comes and uh, and by the way, Hub and Barry, you guys are watching all this go down. You're hanging out by the car, you got the key in your hand, you're like, hello. And all We're this waiting is, to go. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah, this they're is over there doing synth coke and fighting with the guards and like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, so this guy this guard comes up and he pushes that guy and homeboy. <laughs> Oh, falls down, hits his head against the concrete. <laughs> oh my god, it's a kind of it's kind of a messed up thing. He's out, and his eyes are rolled out. His one regular eye is rolled up behind the back of his head, and he's making a weird noise. And the the girls scream. They go, "Oh my god! Oh my god, Devin!" And the other guy you're with goes like, "What the fuck's the matter with you, man? You killed him." What, what do I need to roll to start a riot? Oh my god. <laughs> I want to well, start a riot, and then when the riot starts happening, Adder and I are dipping the fuck out. Well, I'm glad that you have brought that up, my friend, because now you have a small group that you can impact on, and according to the rules, you can convince a group of up to six fans to <laughs> regularly hang out with you, provide booze, drugs, or other party favors for you. And you might be able to convince them to do some crazy things. What do I do? I roll charismatic impact? 1 yes. to 10 plus? Yes, plus, uh, plus your charismatic impact. You're looking to beat a 10. Yeah! Right on the spot. <laughs> All right, so <coughs> these guys are riled up. There's about five of them total, and uh, or six of them total. And one's on the ground with his head cracked open and the other th four are kind of like in the face of these uh, cor these goons and what do you say? Uh, you know I just go, what the, you gonna fucking take this shit from these guys? Look at them, you rise up against the oppressors, man Yeah, man! We gotta take the fucking power back 
Fuck these guys, man. And I'm gonna fuck and these I'm gonna, guys. And I'm gonna throw a, and I'm gonna throw a brick like over every but over the fucking guard's head at a window. And, like throw a brick. You pick up a, a rock or, or a piece of debris that's on the ground. You throw it over these goons' head. It hits the wall behind them right here. It it kind of pops like. Well, is is this a does. is this a window? Is this a window right here? Yeah, that's a window. I'm gonna just fucking. Throw a brick right through the you throw a, shatter the window, right through window. You hear alarms go off inside. Weir, weir, weir. And these guys begin pulling out their weapons. And lo and behold, the the people that you're with, one guy and two of the girls pull out weapons, and they just start aiming their weapons at each other, screaming at each other. This is like a whole standoff situation now. No one's firing a shot, but they're like, "Get the fuck back! You shut the fuck up! Put your gun down! No, you put your gun down!" And uh, these everybody means business. Obviously, the goons are more experienced. It seems like with their trigger discipline, the way they're holding the weapons. These people over here, they don't look like they really fire their weapon all too often. So they're just aiming it in that direction, and it's a whole thing going on right now. That's when I elbow Sam, like, "Yo, let's scoot, let's get, come on, move, move." I just got in the car and turned it on, just. We start backing up, right? We start backing up, and when we get close enough to the car, right? Um, I start to jump in. I'll jump in the back, the passenger back door. Yeah. Right? And as I'm like, I wait for Adder to get in. I wait for everybody who's situated. And I get like halfway in, right? I get halfway in, and I just pull a gun out. I have my gun out, and I get halfway in it, and I just pull the fucking trigger, and we take off. You fire in the <laughs> air. As we're driving away, I, I yes. Shoot, I shoot, like, right here at the wall. <laughs> I know, right? That's exactly <laughs> what I was <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like somebody just has to fire. It's just about to go down. You do exactly <laughs> that. You do exactly that. You fire your, sh your gunshot in the air, and as you do that... It's like you set off a chain reaction. These preppy kids, they freak out. They start shooting. They shoot two of these goons, one in the gut, one in the leg. Then these goons start shooting at them, hitting this car. This guy that owns the car is like, what the hell are you doing? That's my car. He gets hit by a piece of shrapnel. And these guys are having a gunfight within a few meters in front of each other. There's blood everywhere. There, there's people dying, and you see that all in your rearview mirror as you're driving down s out of this area, down 6th Street, and back out wherever the hell you guys want to go, because now you Sam's are outside. So Barry's going to look back at Sam. You really are an asshole, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and I just laugh, and I just go, oh, hey, by the way, Adder, call the cops. On Say there's a disturbance <laughs> going on at this. Uh I'm already on it. <laughs> sure you can do that easily and as you do that there's an automated system that lets the police know the austin city police department and with their automated system they figure out whether a situation is worthy of them to go to and they put it in priorities and they say we will be with you in just about 15 to 25 minutes is the wait time oh and you guys have made it out of sixth street Man, Sam finally, he made some fans. <laughs> and then he got them all, he got them all murdered. <laughs> Not a very good guy. <laughs> Big Fuck, oh. Fuck those preppy douchebags. <laughs> I'm going to toss the key cards and uh, agents and cell phones and everything. We lift it off of uh, those guys back to, uh, back to Blackadder. All right, Blackadder, you have the chance to go into each agent one by one. And uh, they pretty much have the exact same architecture. And you'll just be able to get into it and, and uh, mess with it, do whatever you need to do. So three agents all together? Yeah, it's three agents. Roger that. Let's do it. Okay. Let me get a uh, Pathfinder from you for the first agent. All right, that's Pass. You find that there are three floors on this net architecture within these cell phones or these agents I should say the first one is a password second one is black ice and then third one is a control roger that okay so you would like to bypass the password 
Yes, sir. All right. Roll me in a, a back door. That is a pass. Very good roll. You're able to get past the back door and you are face to face with a black ice program. Let me just grab one real quick. Now, this is all agent by agent, correct? We're doing them one by one? Yeah, exactly. Copy that. So, but you might find all the information you need in one. So, it's up to you. You find a skunk program. And it is face to face with you. Let's get a... You have one more net action, I believe. Before it can attack you. So you can attack this thing if you'd like. Yep. Yeah, one to jack into the device and then one for the pass. So I got one left. Okay, go for it. All right, and this is a skunk, you said, correct? Yeah, this is a black ice, anti-personnel black ice program. Four speed, four attack, two defense, ten res. All right. Anti-personnel. And it is black ice confirmed, so I'm going to go ahead and take a swing with my sword. Okay, and remember to add one to your roll because your sword does one damage. Roger that. To yeah. go. So I'm going to swing and roll my interface to swing at this thing. Yeah, plus one. Okay, that's a 13 versus 12. Just barely Ooh. made it. Very nice. Beautiful damage. Uh, let's right, see let's your damage. Versus black ice. Eh. All Could right. Better. You smack this thing with your sword, and as you pierce it, you see a lot of it derez. It's starting to glitch and move around, and uh, it looks like this program is almost all but gone. And it's going to take a swing back at you. Ooh. And it is going to roll its attack against your interface. This is a skunk, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, this is its attack. All right, so what am I rolling? What, what uh, am interface. I rolling against? Your interface. That's a, it's always uh, going to be interface, yeah. And uh, if you have so any special programs that can give you like buffs and stuff, you can turn them on, on on your turn and stuff like that. Well, this was my last net action, so I can't technically do that. Yeah, not now. You couldn't. Next so, turn. So this is you just dodging the uh, the effect. Yep, and that's int, right? No, no, no. It's just. Your D10 plus interface. Yes, yes, yes. So six. Yeah. Okay, you're able to dodge it, and it is now your turn again. You have three actions. All right, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna swing away again. Okay. All right, Ooh, nice. So close, <laughs> so dude. close, dude. Right, uh, damage, you don't have to. Incoming. You don't have to roll damage. It has one HP. And it derezzes oh, nice. as you swing your sword, and it pixelates out of the net. And you are now in the control center of the agent. And right. let me get an interface control. Copy that. Mm, oh, not so good, no. not you're so not good. able to get mm. control of the system, but you have two more chances. And as you do that, you see a pop-up message on your cyber deck saying... This agent is being tracked by whatever phone company it, it is. And uh, it says, please return this agent to this address. And it's like the nearest store where they sell the those kinds of cell phones or those kinds of agents. All right. So I got two more net actions or is it a full round out with three? You got one more. One more. All right. Or so... wait, no, you only swung. Yeah, swung control. Yeah, you got one more. All right. So I'm going to attempt one more turn here. Get control of the node. Control of the control node, by the way. Yeah. All right, Ooh. that's good enough. You're able to take control of this agent, and you can even shut down any of those uh, fail safes that send a message to the the company saying, "Oh, I got my phone. It's a false information. It's false alarm, and all that." And you're able yeah, to shut do that. all of it down. Shut all of it down. You shut all of it down, and as you do that, you have full control of this person's agent. From the information that you can gather, let me get a library search. Copy that. Incoming. Wait for it. Oof. Yeah, not so good. Not so good. You're not finding too much information. You found uh, this person's name. It says they work for Biotechnica, but indirectly as an independent contractor. And you see the contracting company name, 
and you don't know anything about that contracting company, but it looks like this guy is just like some kind of hired muscle. Okay. All right. And as you guys are doing that, uh, you get a phone call, Hub, on your agent, and it's Doctor Creel. And he says, "He says, Hub, Hub, is that you?" Yeah, that's me. What's up? What What have you find What have you found out? Uh, we just got a bunch of um, agents off some people that might be working for them. We're trying to sift through them for information right now. I'm telling you, the, the lab is the key. There's something about that lab. We just got reports of one of our own. They they were taken to that lab two days ago. We just found out about okay. it. Uh, all right, then we can go check out that lab, see if we can uh, find anything in there. Please do, with haste. I mean, at the Galt site, we're hearing from the rest of the the family that... that some Biotechnica drones have passed by, looked into the area. It looks like they're doing reconnaissance. I think they're really coming with uh, with a large group. We're scared, Hub. I got you. Lay low and try and stay safe. We'll check out the lab. We'll do the best we can on our end. If there's anything you need, please do not hesitate to call. We're in this together. Gotcha. I'll let you know. And as you hang up, uh, Black Adder, you're able to find out that these guys are. This guy has received checks and uh, he has some of his paycheck stubs, screenshots of them on his agent. And there's paycheck stubs from both the storm and the lab. So it, it, it's like separated that way on the stub. It says like payment for lab work, payment for, for security. And yeah, it has it's a split a dis- check. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, right, obviously right. the the club and the lab are owned by the same people. Yeah, so we can go back and maybe see if we can break into the lab and check that out. Yeah, you can definitely do that. You do know that the police are going to be there, but we could say that you went and laid low, got some rest, and maybe went the next day, or maybe went later on at night. Right now it's maybe around 11 p.m., <laughs> Well, we want to give uh, Adder time to turn off uh, the security on all the agents, check them for any information, and check out the key cards we got before we go back. Just so he has, maybe he can get a leg up on their security protocol by checking out their other security they have on these things for when we want him to hack into it when we go back here in a couple hours. Maybe he can piece things together to defeat the demon. Mm. So, why don't I get another library search before you put this agent away and we move on to the other one? Because if you Imagine roll that well, incoming. if you roll well enough, then you might find something. Yep. So, looking through this <laughs> yeah, agent, yep. <laughs> looking through this agent, the same one. You, it looks like you missed one of the applications there, and now it makes sense to you. This is an application for uh, a. It's basically what it does is it gives access to somebody to a a security system without having to be a cyber uh, net runner or anything like that without a cyber deck. You use this app, you connect to a specific system and it has a few buttons on it. So you don't have to be a genius to be able to use this any kind of security system. It's like a layman's key to the net, right? Congrats, Adder. You were just given the keys to the kingdom. So rats. And we have key cards to their security doors. So basically what you you you're not able to do anything that you weren't already able to do cuz you can hack the node yourself. But these guys they can't hack nodes. They actually have to use them in a normal generic way and this is how they normally work with that system. And from what you can see and your experience, you can see that this application is able to access a security bot. And it says two automated turrets with assault rifle ammunition. And it says that all of those, plus cameras, plus doors, plus ventilation system, all of that is with it. And sorry, the cooling system for refrigeration is all within this app. So basically, you're able to tell that in that lab, there's something like that going on. All right. <clears throat> so as as I'm coming to the end of my net running sequence here, 
<laughs> all right, all right, guys, I'm back. Listen, we got some info, all right? We got layman's terms for y'all that don't understand what I'm talking about. Non-hackers getting in to run all different types of security. They got cooling agents, they got turrets, they got a security bot. So we may have the upper hand if you give me some time. Yeah, man, we got to give time for their hassle to go from being what happened with us to dealing with the cops back there anyhow. If we return to the scene and the cops are gone, we're golden. All right? We got the key cards to get in. I can mimic them to what we need. I just need to get inside to connect to make sure I can get that bot going. So, yeah, with enough time you're, and enough hideouts in Terrytown, remember the Nomad family that you guys are working with, they live in Austin. They live in Terrytown specifically. They can give you a place to stay, a safe place to stay. And that's exactly what you guys can do and lay low for about a day or two. It's up to you guys how long you want it to be. Well, we can't really lay low that long. Yeah, we can't. Oh, you're yeah. right. You're right. No, you're right. Well, 24 we hours have from now. a matter of hours. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. we're going to have to take a chance that the cops aren't there. So yeah, how many can... hours uh, do you want to go by before you go back to the scene? Two. Yeah, that should be enough. Uh... I think in an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Yeah, like two max. And show up and like sort of drive by, and if there are no cops, we'll stop. Yeah, because if everybody if everybody here is like, yeah, we're gonna wait like two hours to get there. On like the hour and a half mark, it's just if we're sitting in the car, you know, you got Sam that's sitting in the back seat, and he's just like he's sitting there, and he's just like, yeah, okay, fair enough. So <laughs> you guys wanna really not, you guys wanna drive really by? Like and Barry's looking at Hub like, I'm gonna punch him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Map, map is up. We should roll down on the southern side instead of where we parked last time. Just a good map start. To, we're just doing a drive by. We're just any other car driving down this street. Exactly. You're in a non conspicuous vehicle. I'm gonna turn yep. off my. I'm gonna turn off my mohawk, and you know the tech hair is just gonna kind of fall back down. I'm gonna put the hood up. So low yeah, key, you guys key. you guys get back and you're driving from the south north, right? Yeah. You're at this intersection and you can immediately see there is one cop car parked right here and behind it it looks like a a coroner van. Oof. Over here. And there's a few police officers walking in and out of this area, not too many. There's like maybe 3 or 4 in this corner it looks like they're walking back there and uh some paramedics are or the cor the coroners are pulling out some bodies that are in some body bags on a stretcher and they're pulling them out to the vehicle all right we'll just drive on past and then uh swing back around in maybe another hour sure one hour later you guys swing back around coming in the coroner's gone the police are gone it's business as usual, except the nightclubs, lights are off, the doors are closed, and in fact, the only thing that still has its lights on are this lab right here. Sweet. Just as planned, we, we filtered out the club, so now all those guys aren't there. That's what we were going for with that. Exactly. Yeah. It looks like there's nobody on the streets. There's a little bit of blood on the streets from when these guys shot at each other, and <laughs> body bags... And it looks like the street has been cleaned up. And it's business as usual. This is the dark future where people die in the streets all the time. Yeah. I guess we'll uh, stop right about where the car is now and then go try and uh, check out the lab. Where was the security camera that, uh, that Adder found? Right on the corner down here. Yeah, it was like right, right. right there. Oh, sorry. That was, the, that was where you were standing when you found a node. Right, the, mm, the node is right would, here. Yeah, the node is right there on the inside. I was chilling here. Oh, because the camera was here. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Okay, so wanna, so we want to sneak yeah. around through the alley up above and then around? Yeah, we could come down the back end. I mean, Adder's got that phone. He can just go, oh, camera's off. True. But I don't know if, oh, uh, well, there will probably be cameras inside that we want to turn off too. That's true. 
Yeah, and I, I need to get connected to the local network of the lab to get into the cameras for the area of the building. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, you guys can go straight into the lab. I mean, it's right here. There's the entrance is here. And then this door right here, it looks like it's locked and shut off. It's tinted. You can't see inside. But this looks like it's the main entrance. So that window that got smashed when we're walking, uh, how high up is it? This one, it's already been boarded up. Damn. So, I mean, smashed. so if we're out and about and we're walking, mm -hmm. like, Sam's going to kind of just, like, you know, as he's walking past, he's going to slow, as we're all walking past, Slam's, Sam's going to, like, slow down and listen to see if he can hear anything coming from inside. Um, sure. So you're right by this window, and since the window's been broken, there isn't really that much protection. So the inside, you hear the humming of what sounds like refrigeration units, whirring of, like, robotic arms. And uh, you hear servers and computers. But as far as, you know, people chatting or, or talking, you don't hear anything like that. You don't hear any chatter, any footsteps, any movement in that sense. Do you want, like, a perception to see if I can focus on anything other than, like, the mechanics and stuff? Like, if I hear yeah. people? Yeah, let me get a perception roll from you. Okay, you're hearing much of the same. Every now and then you're hearing the clatter of, uh, of tools. Uh, or, or metal against metal, you're assuming they're tools or something like that. Some kind of tools that are being used and put set down and picked up again. I'll kind of like relay that to everybody is like, I, I mean, I hear a lot of, you know, automated mechanics and stuff, but I, I'm, I think I, I can't really be certain, but I, I think I'm picking up like a faint sound of a person picking something up, like using tools and stuff. But I can't, I can't be certain. I can't really hear over the hum of the, uh, the machinery and stuff. All right. Let me get eyes on it. Okay. So what do you do? I want to approach from where I was coming down around the corner because I know this camera's here. Yeah. Now, I can't act... I can't reach those cameras unless I'm jacked in, right? Uh, unless you're jacked into a node or... Which you, is here. You have right? a mobile node. Yeah, exactly. But that mobile, you're finding out that the application is not working within the boundaries outside. So it's probably one of those programs that needs to be connected to the local Wi-Fi for it to be able to be used. So you have to connect to the Wi-Fi of the of the lab. Which it's right. our, it's saved in the phone, but you just don't have a good signal. Alright, so how close can I get without this camera freaking out on me? I'm I right mean, here. there's people that walk around on these streets. It's not illegal to walk on the streets. The camera's just there for safety. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to casually stroll down, starting from here and kind of coming around just Getting close enough to kind of peek in, but not too close to where it's going to freak out on me. Yeah, it's not freaking out. It's just there, uh, observing in case something happens. They have records of it. That's all it is. And just looking for a signal. If I get close enough and the signal connects. So why don't you roll me a stealth? All right, incoming. Okay, it's good enough. You're able to successfully pass through this camera's observation because once again this has been a blind spot you're able to get to that blind spot there's just so many people walking by you kind of walk through the crowd and uh, somebody would really have to be paying attention on the playback to see any anything that happened all right cool so i am in range now of this node yes absolutely you're in range you know what's happening roll me a pathfinder Okay, 10. You you can read up to six floors on this thing. S six floors. Hold on. Yeah. Fresh fresh notebook page. Hold on. I'm you just... already know there's a demon in it. Yeah, and as soon as you connect, yep. the demon... It knows I'm there. The, yeah. the demon knows you're there. <clears throat> right now, he looks like he's supposed to be in there, though, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just it knows that he's there. So it's observing him, but so far you haven't done anything. You haven't backdoored or anything like that. Right. All right, so we got password, black eyes, control node, 
Another password, another black eyes, another control note. That's right. Jesus Christ. Wrong and pen, you've only been able to find the <laughs> six floors. You know that there are more floors after the sixth. You just don't know how many and you don't know what they are. All right. And so, how, so technically we're not in combat, so net actions don't really count, right? They don't really count. But you also right. have the phone that can control stuff, too. You have a phone that's got a controller, basically, right? Yeah. Like, the, the demon knows that you've jacked in with your cyber deck. But you also have the phone, which is already set up to have admin control over stuff. Exactly. So you can just use your phone to bypass certain things, like the password, and you can just go straight to the control system, the control node. Okay. All right. So it it, it recognizes that I've jacked in, but I'm using the, the phone. phone as. Exactly. So you're right. you automatically pass the password, and since you're a trusted user, the black ice ignores you. And you get so right to, the, to the control node. You get straight to the control node. It is to control the alarm system, the front door, the lab door, and the lights. Alarm, front, lab, and lights. Let's hit the next one. <clears throat> okay, past that is. Let me double check. Let me look at my notes. And you got another password, and then another black ice. Okay, so past that, the this phone doesn't have access to. All right, so I got to roll against. You got to roll against a password. But All right, remember, see. you have control of the alarm system, front door, lab door, and the lights right now. Without that anything opposing you. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to pass that information back to everybody else. I'm like, listen, we got wide open to get in. I can turn off the alarm. I can open the front door, lab door, lights, everything. So what are we doing, boys? I'm going to toss uh, Hub one of the IDs. As uh, I turn my tech hair and my uh, skin to match the color of granite and uh, walk towards the front door with uh, my ID and uh, Sam one. Guess it's time to go in, boys. The front door is right here, right by Black Adder. Uh, also, make sure Black Ad to tell Black Adder turn off the fucking camera and the alarms. So he doesn't yeah. have camera controls, unfortunately. Correct. It's just it's lights, doors, and the alarm, so and I'm going to turn we, all of them off. Do we want to go around the uh, alleyway side then? Maybe avoid. There's actually no entrance into the lab. This is the only one right here. Yeah, front door, and then this, this secondary door. Secondary over here, door. Yeah. So I'm like, go around this way, so maybe we can avoid the the camera. Camera. No, the camera can see the front door. The camera just has a oh, blind spot exactly yeah, yeah. where Adder is at. Yeah, so right. it sees like this pretty much. And I'm turning off the I'm turning off the lights. I'm uh, opening all the doors. So as you guys well, come around, there's not going to be lights. I wouldn't turn off the lights because not all of us have the ability to see in low light. Uh, who doesn't? I have anti dazzle. I don't have low light. Do you have low light uh, vision in your cyber eye? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I don't have low light vision in my cyber eyes. All right, well, I'll hold my hand and I'll guide you. To <laughs> <laughs> just, don't, just don't turn the light. Just don't turn the lights off. We don't need right. the lights off. Well, if the lights are off, the camera can't see us. Hey, uh, quick question. Yeah. Just randomly, uh, what can we? I see from the roof up here, from back here, like. Uh, the roof. It, it just looks like a regular flat roof on a business. There's no vents or anything like that, though. Why don't we get Adder on the roof so he can just do his techie stuff from the roof? You can do that easily. You'll be close, but he's right. already jacked into the node. Right, but people aren't going to look at a roof of a building and go, "Oh, wonder what's going on up there." Yeah, maybe no, other but... people in the other buildings that can see down on the top of the lab, but some of those people might just be like. Yeah, whatever. This guy's probably doing maintenance. Well, if one of you guys wants to do an athletic check to toss him up on the roof, he can go for it right now. <clears throat> I mean, I'll just grab him, hold him, pull out my grapple gun, and take us both up on top of the roof. There you go. If you have a grapple gun, then you can go straight to the roof. What's is there? Do you have to roll anything for that? <sighs> um, let me 
double check it real fast. So you use athletics to climbing and pretty much the grapple gun just negates any penalties to climbing. So you still have to roll athletics? Yeah, I would still have to roll that. Okay, so that's fine. Roll that and uh, in fact I'll give you a plus one. All right, so you grapple onto the roof and you're able to swing back up, up and over, and you can actually both get on the roof if you want, or you could just toss Black Adder up there. I'm pretty much just taking him up there. I'll go up there with him at first to make sure there's no surprises on the roof. Yeah, it just looks like a standard flat roof. Uh, there's no any, there's no robotics or anything like that up there. There's no vent, vents large enough for you to to get inside. Just regular venting and piping and stuff like that. Nothing out of the ordinary. So Black Adder, you're on the roof over here, right? I'm just gonna put you right there. What for a quick BRB? Ooh. No, he's here. Okay, he's back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'm back. I'm back, but my guy's disappeared because he's under the fog. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. I'll just put, put you right there the then. So you're on the roof and. Uh, I'm assuming you guys are walking into this establishment. And the lights are still on, right? Absolutely. Okay. We'll have a we'll have a uh mine and adder's agents will be connected to each other, you know, kind of a uh, own so he can hear what's going on and can hear us easily. So yeah, you do that no problem. Um oops. And you guys walk into this lab, and when you guys walk into this lab, the there's a robot behind the counter, and it has a giant hose connected to its head that is connected to something that is on the ceiling, and that is connected to a bunch of stuff on the ceiling, including two big round balls in each corner of the room, one right here and one right here. And the robot looks at you with a jerk, and it scans your badge. You see a uh, a red light pass through its eyes to your badge as it scans your badge, and its lights its eyes turn green, and it says, "Welcome." Welcome. And Enter. It does that for each one of you as you guys all walk yeah. in one by one. We're all going in. All right, you do that, and while oh. you go ahead. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and Black Adder, would you like to go deeper into this architecture? Yes. We'll also close close the front door, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Close the front door. Oh yeah. Lock the front door. <laughs> okay, you do just that. You're still on the roof, right? Correct. I'm outside, everybody's inside. Okay, now as soon as you go past this fourth floor, which is the password. Mm -hmm. This demon is going to know that you're of your presence in the net. Right. And now past this point, the the key cards and the phones don't matter. They don't right? matter. Yeah. At this point. All right. So let's All right. Okay. So if you roll me your interface, <laughs> you are not able to pass through this password. Which is good news because the the demon doesn't know of your existence because you didn't get past the password. But you still have two more shots to take at this password. All right, let's hope hope, hope it's all out of the system. Two more shots. We're gonna roll again on the password incoming. All right, very well done. You get past this password and bypass it, and as soon as you do, that light lights up bright, and you hear a demon uh a. Uh, a robotic voice in the net say, Intruder detected. Intruder oh. detected. And while you guys are inside, this robot all of a sudden wigs out, looks up straight, its eyes turn red, and it says, Gentlemen, an intruder has been detected. And it starts scanning uh, throughout its, uh, its programming, and it says, Intruder has been detected on the roof. I say, I'm going to text... I'm going to text uh, Barry and, you know, because the, there's the tube coming out of the top of this robot's head that's going to these balls. It's going to the roof and then a bunch of cables and stuff are going. You specifically said those two orbs on the roof, right? They're, yeah, they're on the ceiling on the inside. And as you guys hear this robot say that, all of a sudden 
these uh, these orbs open up and you see gu rifle or guns out of these turrets. They're, they were turrets the entire time. They're well, pointing course, in course. every direction, scanning the room. And uh, the robot looks at you guys and says, Initiating Protocol Blue. And it scans your... How do we get... Look at the... Hey, robot. Uh, quickest way to the roof from here to get the intruder. One moment, please. Initiating Protocol Blue. And it's scanning your ID Just badges. going to calmly walk over here, jump behind here as he is initiating this. <laughs> and then it's it, his eyes turn yellow and say, Undetermined security level. Please... Password. Hmm. I'll be. I'll have my. I'll have my agent out, and I'll be like, "Right, what's the password?" Well, I cleared that second password, and I'm in. And the demon Did sees me. Robots asking us for a password. You're at a. You you do that, Black Adder, and as soon as you do that, you see a giant, black ice program. A hellhound is facing you. And it's huge, gnashing red teeth are looking at you. And even though you're in a virtual space, it's still a scary sight for any netrunner. And as you're doing that, this hellhound is kind of docile, but its eyes are flashing. Meaning that it's still getting orders from somewhere. Whether it should attack you, not attack you, it doesn't know. It's kind of, it, 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 the program is kind of glitching out. And fast uh, forward to you, Barry. You're face to face with this thing. Its eyes are turning yellow. It's asking for the password. You have one more chance to give us the password before force why, is taken. That's why I'm texting Adder. I'm like, what's the motherfucking password? Yeah, didn't the uh, didn't he get the password from the uh, phones? Black Adder, why don't you get a give me a library search real quick? I thought that was one of the things we got. He has, he has the first password. <laughs> you have all the passwords, and you're actually trying to put it in yourself to turn off this whole system, and you're getting an error saying this password is old. It has been changed one second ago. Like, fuck, boys. Somebody's got lock on the password. They just changed it. I gotta take this demon down. Well, as he says that, I'm... Uh... Baseballing for the uh, cables connecting the robot to the wall. And as you do that, the robot at the exact same time takes a different shape. It opens up some of its compartments and you see weaponry coming out of it. Firearms, sharp objects and everything. As you're swinging your bat, this is all happening in a millisecond. And the turrets <laughs> begin aiming at the people that are in this room. I'm fucking diving right here behind this fucking counter. And let me just give you guys a quick little visual. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm like, Sam is diving in like this direction, like this way, like behind this fucking counter, getting out of the way of these goddamn turrets. So, um, for the, uh, what's this thing here? Uh, uh, like a fax machine, copy machine, but it's big enough that you can get behind it. And uh, it's it's a large one. It's like one from the future. So it's okay. giant. It does more than faxing and stuff like that. It does all it kinds does of things. Okay. A giant future fax machine. It's a so super fax machine, dude. Sam, base Sam basically could have just gone. Oh fuck! And dove behind this thing. Let's get a uh, let's get some uh, initiative here. We're putting everything into my um my damage. By the way. Okay, sounds good. All right, boys, listen. I got a demon. I got a demon I got to take down. Hold tight. Help me out as much as you can. You just hear shouting and screaming on the other side. <laughs> Man, yeah, you hear Sam like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And you hear, oh, fuck, the door is locked. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's we locked the door inside. and we're like, oh, fuck, the door is locked. Okay, according to the cyberpunk red rules, the... Turrets go to the top of the order of the turn order. Automatic turrets do, while the demon is, demon is in control of it. So just deducing from what you can, Blackadder, it looks like the demon is in control of the robot, in control of the turrets, 
and everything. It's the AI system that's in control of this entire lab. And right. you might be able to help these guys out against this thing because they're about to get shot at from some they're really They're about to nasty all get targets. murdered. Exactly. But I'm going to be giving Barry the first shot over Sam just because of narrative purposes. I'm going to put you on the top of the... Uh, under the turrets, but at the top of the order list. Okay. All right? And ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately... Do not let the music fool you. We do have to end this session tonight of the wise guys in Austin, Texas. And I want to thank my players for being involved and all of you guys for being involved. We're very sorry to end it on this note. But we will be back to battle this big bad robot and his two turret ball friends <laughs> on the next episode. All right. That's nice. This All right, nice that's little, it. That's robot. This, this nice little session and this whole combat is punctuated with Sam going, fuck! <laughs> All right, listen, episode, episode the three. It's the password. Oh, God, the door is locked. No! John, no. when you save the third episode after we're done with it, it has to be named Demon Balls. Demon Balls. All right, that's... Talking Balls. That's, I'm down. <laughs> this is going to be called Demon Balls. I like it. That is so clickbait, dude. That is so clickbait, and people would just <laughs> click that shit for shits and giggles, dude. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, well, I'll tell you next time. But basically, you saw the demon. It has its own stats and stuff, and you can attack it at any time while you're within the net. Black do... matter and the demon's balls of fury. Exactly. <laughs> do, you, do you have the the stat block for the demon, or is it in the cheat sheet? Uh, it should be in the cheat sheet. All right. Hold on. I feel that this uh, this robot's official call sign is uh, C zero Tech K. <laughs> C zero Tech K. So you see the bottom part of the cheat sheet for Black Ice. It says Imp Efreet Balron. Yep. It's an Efreet program. It's an Efreet. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. All right, guys. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one, ladies and gentlemen. We really appreciate you guys being here. We'll be back with the wise guys. Is there anything you guys want to say before we sign off? I really enjoyed the session. I'm looking forward to the next one. Ah, yes. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I hope we don't get murdered by turrets. Yeah, that yeah, too. If we do get murdered by turrets, you know, it happens. We're edge runners. We were expendable to begin with. <laughs> be sure to follow DG Rage Riot over on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Twitch. I stream tons of sci fi shit. I yep, love Cyberpunk. Exactly. And I love you, boys. I love you, boys. And what the fool? Right. Make sure you guys join him on Twitch and oh, yeah. Jimblesaurus Rex and just send Joe your love. Yeah, follow me in real life. In real life, follow and, him, you and, stalkers. And send, send, me. send Shrub Ninja follow nudes, me. lots of nudes, especially if you're <laughs> got huge titties. <laughs> All right, signing off. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye. See you on the flip.